chapter beginning at the 23rd verse. Now Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Now do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to
two more weeks, the Festival of the Ascension, and it concludes with the Festival of Pentecost. And in our lessons, we've been processing first through the Easter accounts where Jesus is appearing, and now, post-resurrection, we are hearing lessons that we are asked as church to see through the lens of resurrection. In our gospel this morning, we hear John speaking to us the words of Jesus, who has been dealing with the disciples before his crucifixion, telling them, I am not with you forever, and when I leave you, I won't leave you comfortless. I will send one who will be your advocate, the Holy Spirit. In my peace I am leaving with you. And he also speaks about the mystery of the Trinity, couched, but there. It's not my words I speak, it's my Father. So we have the Son coming from the Father and the Holy Spirit being sent by Jesus, but we also assume from the Father. Sounds like one of those Trinitarian conundrums that the Athanasian Creed tries to take apart and we still go, what does it mean? But it is about our future secured for us and living that future secured for us in the present. I wanted to read a portion of a deathbed letter. Sounds a little odd. This is written by Walter Bowman. Walter Bowman was professor of systematic theology at Trinity Lutheran Seminary. Systematic theology sounds big and grand and complicated, but Walter would say it's really about your life experience in the faith and how you put it together. Walter said, the surgeon stood by my bedside in the recovery room, and he said, we've removed a large growth attached to your abdomen. There's no longer any cancer in your colon, but it has spread to your liver and your lymph nodes, and it was stage four, terminal. From the Latin terminus, the end of the line. I remember thinking how powerful it must be for this good and gentle man to have to say these words to a patient. And then I thought of Paul's words. We do not live to ourselves. We do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Walter encapsulated at that moment that it is not about the terminal diagnosis. It is about being the Lord's and living life even unto death as one who believes that he or she or even all creation has a place redeemed made new in the presence of the Lord. Now, Walter, being a systematician, went on and on and on. There's four pages of this letter. He speaks of God's universal salvation. And he says, I don't like that because I think it's very unfair. I worked hard in my faith. I have confessed my sins. But God in Jesus offers salvation to all, and all is not just some. All is all. So Walter says, I rest in the joy that it's not just for me, and not just for my family or my church friends, or for the great reformers of the faith. This Jesus who is for the healing of the nations is for all, and therefore I give them all to Jesus. And I need not fear or worry. And then he concludes 
with a section he entitled Free to Love, only Walter Bowman. And he may sound like a boring man, but this was a rotund individual who laughed like Santa Claus. And he laughed at himself and laughed at how ridiculous God's love was for us. And he says, because Jesus died, we die in him, and he rose, therefore we rose. We are free to love. Free to love the church. Not the church where all agree with each other, but the church that our disagreements fill us with dismay. Rob us of hope, and often we pursue agendas so contrary to what we think is church. All we believe is that God wants this community of faithful to be in despair at all times and in all places. It is that church that we are free to love. He goes on to speak of how we in the ELCA fight over things such as the inclusion of gay and lesbian persons, over how bishops should be interpreted within the tradition. Yet in all that fighting, that is not unto salvation. Jesus' death and resurrection is what counts. And that we as a church body even come down to only two things that we are to do. To preach the word in its purity as best we can. And to share the sacraments rightly. The gifts that Jesus has given us, baptism and the supper of the Lord. All else is adiaphora, a fancy word for it is not necessary. It helps give order. And it is in the midst of this that we are free to love. Yet to be free to love calls us to lean on that power from on high, Walter reminds us. That we cannot do it ourselves. It is Jesus, through the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that speaks to us. Through the Apostles and the Prophets. Through the Martyrs and even the Heretics. For they have all postulated, who is Jesus and how do we understand him? And let me share what I have experienced of him in my life. Even down to our Sunday school teachers and how we share one another, with one another in the people. Now Walter says, a mark of any church is the love it has for one another, but let's be real. We love one another through coffee hour. We put on the brave face through council meeting. But it is hard. Loving unconditionally is hard, hard work, and we cannot do it in and of ourselves. And that's why we fall again and again and again at the roots of the tree of life of Jesus, confessing, I can't do it on my own, help me. And the Holy Spirit, given by Jesus and the Father, helps us through the word lived in others, in the word expressed in tradition, in the word received in body and blood. Walter concludes, and it's the word we're receiving from Walter today via Patrick. He concludes reminding us that our faith is grounded, always grounded, in our future secured. He says, I've resisted temptation to say, Stop the world because I'm getting off. Instead, I continue to care about the world. I pray for it and urge all to be faithful stewards of our planet and to make us a more reasonable member of the family of all nations 
for which Jesus is the tree of life and the healing of all nations. The agenda is urgent. In a world where gap between rich and poor increase daily, we need to oppose policies that condemn the poor of the world to lives of misery and early graves. We need to hold our governments to war policies that adhere to just standards. And we need to ask why our policies as a nation make us more fearful and feared and more arrogant and hated in the world rather than more loved and looked up to. He concludes, now I am entering into my final baptismal stage, my beginning's end, the final dying where Jesus awaits and he gives that thing that still sits curious in my mind, the promise that God will be everything in everyone. I am leaving the saints on the side of the grave to join the saints on the other side. And saints don't mean that our morals and behavior are somehow better than others. Sainthood means being set apart by God for God's reign. I do not know what heaven will be like, but my great expectation is that the Lord Jesus will be there to welcome me and I will be fully and completely set apart for his everlasting reign. It's good to have time to tie up loose ends to tell family and friends that I love them. And in my prayers every day, I commend myself to the unworthy and imperfect service that I am called to render until I am made perfect in Jesus. And I look forward to the surprise that Jesus has in store. Jesus said, I send you an advocate, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is that which is of God and of Jesus, and it is operative in, with, and under people. And the Advocate sent us one like Walter, one like David who preaches here, one like Yom Tak O, oh, I finally learned Pastor O's name, of Bethany, of Bishop Valentine, of Good Shepherd. The Advocate sends us to speak to one another of the good news that because Jesus died and rose again, we need not fear anything, for our future is secure. And in that knowledge, may we go forth from this place, living as best we can, as Walter said, imperfectly, in our service, to one another and to our world, so that they may see in, with, and under us, Jesus, who died and rose, and who has secured their future, so that all nations may be healed under that tree of life. May it be so, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to renew us. 